Did Tari Pagacha nearly stuff this sprint after Micah's lead out? This was Tour of Slovenia Stage 5, the final stage. Now, GC was pretty much a wrap. The question was, how hard would Pagacha go on this short 2K 9% climb that crested shortly before the finish? Would he want to pace afterwards? Because, yeah, he's got GC wrapped up. It's just whether the stage when he and Micah wanted to go and launch it again. So a happy day for UAE and they were probably made happier when the break went with 76 or 76 case to go as we're looking at it when bike exchange were helping control that breakaway they, UAE probably couldn't believe their luck they got to take a back seat for a bit YOLO active too as well as Kaha really kosh to just waiting their second wheel and they're going up to this climb the Truska Gora climb 2k is 9% narrow road steep sections look like a lovely little climb and it was actually Pagacha giving himself a lead out. I couldn't see where, the, where Micah was. He's in the red jersey. Uh, he's a little bit out of position. He had to bridge back later. And uh, Pagacha just sends it from the bottom. He's got Morich on the wheel, Conchi third wheel, I think, or fourth wheel for Alps and Phoenix trying to come back on GC. I don't know where Diamond Novak is. And yeah. Pagacha, he didn't attack initially. This was kind of like Van Vlerden on the Siena climb and Strada Bianca this year. He has a big dig at this point as it gets a bit steeper. You see the difference in styles. Moritz trying to stay in the saddle just a little bit longer. He likes to just do a steadier pace, obviously. And I've got to be honest, I, I was surprised Pagacha didn't drop him more. Like, I, I think he was trying. I'm not going to say... Like, it looked to me like Pagacha really was trying. He couldn't drop Morich on that climb. Now, Morich hasn't posted on Strava yet. I haven't seen the numbers. So maybe Morich was just on an insane day. But I, I was surprised. And he goes over the top. Pagacha's got Micah chasing. But then he attacks on the descent here. And I think it's into a little dipper. There's no uh, moto footage of this. So you can't see the gradient too well. But you see Pagacha getting out of the saddle there. I think it was a little dipper. And he was trying to gap Morich. But... On the descent, Morich closes it back up almost two seconds, breaking later into this next left-hander and then in the next right-hander. He's going to come back and Micah will come back as well. So a very, very similar scenario to what we've seen in, in previous stages with two UAE riders and a Bahrain rider brought along for the ride. And kind of like the stage one when Novak was like, do I work with these guys or not? And Moritz has joined them. Pogac looks back, sees Micah there, and it now levels off. We've got a flat run to the finish, then a sprint finish in town. He gets Micah to keep the pace going, and Moritz is sort of forced to close back onto that Micah wheel. So UAE had a pretty flawless Tour of Slovenia, Pog 1 GC here last year. I think they picked up even more stages here because there were less sprint stages, and poor Luca Mezget was trying to close it himself but when you got three riders working out front and Morich you know he won Milano San Remo the same way with the motorbike um on the Poggio descent he gets this toe from the race vehicle and you see the difference like the guys behind him who are in the, the car draft can't keep up well Mez gets like I'm done too hot pulls the water over himself calls it a day and so the question is will UAE try and do a deal with Morich like was there a deal done on stage one when Novak I don't know when Micah won that stage, or would they let Morich win because Pagacha and Micah have already won stages, or would they just have a sprint? Fortunately for us, we had a full competitive sprint, which was great for the fans and great to see. Micah goes to the front, Pagacha's third wheel, Pagacha and Morich, I would say are both similarly quick guys, maybe Pagacha a little bit better snap, but Morich got a decent sprint, as we saw in Polonia, and San Sebastian's sprint was okay, sometimes better than that, and you might be wondering, why are they in this order, Micah, Morich, Pagacha? And the, the answer is, if Pagacha goes on to Micah's wheel through this corner, he can let Micah's wheel go, and that will put Moritz in an annoying and difficult position in Micah attacks to close that wheel. So, And obviously, Micah's doing the hard lead-out. So Moritz is forced to go second wheel, and the benefit of that is Pagacha goes into the draft, or one would think into the draft, of his competitor, and he gets to get that draft in the sprint. The problem was he almost laid off too much, and we'll see it better in the full overhead. He has to come around Micah, gets briefly for maybe a second into Moritz slipstream, who has the shortest line, and just nails him on the line by maybe a wheel. It was a comfortable win, but you see here, I think Pog nearly stuffed this because he's worried at this point that if he follows Moritz's draft, and obviously the draft is advantageous, that's why Micah went to the front, he was in the best position, maybe he gets boxed a little bit and he can't come out of the draft quickly enough for the finish. So he has to go the long way around a left-hand bend around Micah. In the end, he didn't actually need to. He could have just followed Moritz's draft the whole time and come out of it, and then he would have won probably 
even easier. Um, but yeah, just maybe a little bit of a tactical mistake, but the legs were too good, so it didn't really matter. Anyway, Pogaccio wins the sprint, another Slovenia stage in the books. Happy days for Micah and Pogaccio. Maybe Micah saying I couldn't hear on the radio. Winning the stage ahead of Morich, Micah Mezgets winning the bunch from behind in front of Felina, Conchi, Fiorelli, Albanese, Soto, and Barcelo. Pogaccio, of course, takes the GC win, and Micah, his teammate, a few stages. He'll be happy ahead of the Tour de France as well. Micah second on GC, Novak just clinging on to third, 10 seconds ahead of Albanese. Repa fifth, then Conchi, Paul Duble in seventh, then Beltran, Barcelo, and Davide Gaburo in tenth. So all eyes ahead to the Tour de France for Pogaccia. In terms of his form, I guess it's fine. Like, I don't really know. It's not like the Dauphiné tune-up with Slovenia. I, he looks in good shape, and I'm sure he'll come to the Tour de France in fantastic condition. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see my pre-Tour de France content or the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast, which has a massive Tour de France preview dropping in about a week. Until then, ciao.